Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless sounds like something out of a novel about the end times a way for the government to track your movements through a digital identity system but it's not science fiction it is under consideration right now in the european union and might even come to the united states imagine a state where the government keeps tabs on everywhere you go everything you say and everything you buy through a digital identity system it sounds like communist china now the european union may be headed in that same direction and and what's even worse, the idea is gaining support in the United States in our own Congress. Dale Hurt is on the story. Is the European Union on its way to becoming a surveillance society like China? The European Digital Identity. This cheery introduction to the EU's upcoming digital identity program tells citizens that it will make their lives easier while keeping them safer online. The European Digital Identity Wallets will enable us to store and exchange documents and legal information while fully controlling which data we want to share with whom. ID data sent. EU President Ursula von der Leyen says digital identities will give citizens control over how their personal data is used and will help stop identity theft. The so-called digital wallet will be an app on a person's phone and will contain only the information a person wants it to include, such as medical or financial information. Credit rating sent. Income statement sent. It's already under attack in the European Parliament as something that would be ripe for government abuse. One of its chief critics, European Parliament member Christian Torres, was born in communist Romania and has long been warning of the EU's so-called Chinification. Clearly we are witnessing right now the Chinification of Europe because we see what is happening in China right now with the social credit score where the government is monitoring and uh, surveilling all the people from the beginning to end. Everything that they do, everything, everywhere where they walk, it's every, you know, they control everything and they, they, they watch everything. This is the example of a tyranny. The EU insists the digital identity program will be voluntary. Skeptics are wondering how long before it becomes mandatory. How voluntary is the European digital identity wallet? But even more important, how voluntary will it remain in the future? Because the European Union always comes up with nice plans to eventually abuse it, to create more control. The EU's COVID passport was supposed to be temporary. Now Brussels wants to extend it until at least June of next year. COVID passports have been used to prevent the unvaccinated from crossing borders, entering grocery stores, using public transit and even going to their jobs. It's helped fuel violent demonstrations, the likes of which Europe hasn't seen for decades. Some in Washington are urging Joe Biden to establish digital identities for Americans as a way of fighting identity theft. There's also support in Congress. The so-called Improving Digital Identity Act of 2020 never made it to a vote, but could be revived. Not only are digital IDs coming to Europe, but in Italy, the cities of Rome and Bologna have begun social credit programs that reward citizens for behavior that officials think will fight climate change, like using a bicycle instead of a car. A social credit system could be easily incorporated into a digital identity. Austrian Catholic leader Alexander Chukowell says that in any European social credit system, Christians will lose because of their opposition to issues like abortion that the EU views as a human right. Therefore, I do not want the European Union to have the possibility to look into everything I do, everything I say, everything I have, and how I move and where I am at any time. Those systems are pushed by people who are highly anti-Christian. Torres warns that the EU's new digital ID is the next step in a process in which the government in Brussels will micromanage every aspect of people's lives. This is what makes the difference between a tyranny 
and democracy. When you know everything about what your government does, that's democracy. When the government knows everything about you, that is tyranny. As anyone can plainly see, the world is in a state of decay, moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind, but his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal, until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. What do we know about the Antichrist? The Antichrist has many names. The King of Fierce Countenance, the Prince who is to come, the Beast, the Son of Perdition, the Worthless Shepherd, the Man of Sin, the Lawless One. The first seal judgment in the book of Revelation is the releasing of the Antichrist upon the earth. Revelation 6, 1 and 2. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him. And he went out conquering, and to conquer. The Antichrist will be evil, yet appear as a savior. Daniel 8.25 Through his cunning, he shall cause the sea to prosper under his rule, and he shall exalt himself in his heart. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. He shall even rise against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without human means. He will be outspoken and have great speaking ability. Revelation 13.5 And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. The Antichrist will have a fierce countenance. Daniel 8.23 And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise, having fierce features, who understands sinister schemes. He will be extremely proud. Daniel 11.36-37 and 37. Then the king shall do according to his own will. He shall exalt and magnify himself above every god, shall speak blasphemies against the God of gods, and shall prosper till the wrath has been accomplished. For what has been determined shall be done. The Antichrist will not desire women. Daniel 11.37 He shall regard neither the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall exalt himself above them all. He will be a military genius. Revelation 13.4 so they worshipped the dragon, who gave authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? The Antichrist will be mortally wounded. Revelation 13, 14 And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast, who is wounded by the sword and lived. Zechariah 11.17 Woe to the worthless shepherd who leaves the flock. A sword shall be against his arm and against his right eye. His arm shall be completely withered and his right eye shall be totally blinded. The Antichrist will be indwelt by Satan. Daniel 8.24 His power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. He shall destroy fearfully and shall prosper and thrive. He shall destroy the mighty and also the holy people. He will come from a revived Roman Empire. Daniel 9.26 And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood, until the end of the war desolations are determined. The Antichrist will control a one-world government Revelation 13.7 It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. 
and authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. He will control a one world religion. Revelation 13, 11, and 12. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. The Antichrist will control a one world monetary system known as the Mark of the Beast. Revelation 13, 16 through 18. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, his number is 666. Why worry about losing your car keys when you can take matters into your own hands, literally, with a chip implanted in your hand at a tattoo and piercing parlor? You can't lose your hand, so you'll always have a way of getting in your car. Brandon Delali had a local anesthetic injected, then the chip inserted. A few days later, his hand hardly sore. He was hovering over the door pillar to open his Tesla. Though he's been mocked, Tesla bros will single-handedly ruin civilization. Brandon says he's no Elon Musk groupie, but rather... I'm a huge tech nerd. I work in technology. What he really wants is for the chip to be updated so the implant will work for credit cards. But till that's possible, he'll settle for starting his Tesla by holding his hand over the console. I'm getting a lot of comments saying, well, what happens if somebody comes after you and tops off your hand? Brandon already had a chip implanted in his other hand that allows him to unlock the door to his home also holds his contact and medical information, such as COVID vaccinations. It glows green, so you know the phone is reading the chip. Can you show me your lump? It's hard to see, but you can kind of see part of it kind of pop up on the end right there. Barely a bump, though he's taking his lumps online. But they don't get to say with a wave of the hand. Open no sesame! Yes, open no sesame! <laughs> We need to understand the microchip that people are accepting right now is not the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast will be something given only to those who worship the Antichrist. Having a microchip that can unlock doors, get snacks from a vending machine, or hold medical and financial records is not the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast will be an end times identification required by the Antichrist in order to buy or sell. Many end times prophecy watchers differ widely as to the exact nature of the mark of the beast. Besides the implanted chip view, an electronic tattoo onto the skin is another option. Mark is the Greek word karagma, which means a scratch or etching, i.e. a stamp, as a badge of servitude. This leads me to believe the mark of the beast is a tattoo. Getting someone to take an RFID chip is not going to be an easy task. Putting it under the skin is painful and creepy. Taking the mark of the beast in a tattoo form will be easy as a big part of the population already has tattoos. Why is it a person who takes the mark of the beast can no longer be saved? Satan hates mankind because we are made in the image of God, as we read in Genesis 1.27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. Many people, including myself, believe Satan will somehow combine his DNA with mankind when they take the mark of the beast. Man will literally become the genetic son of Satan because he will have Satan's seed mingled in with his own, thus creating man in his own image. And just as the Nephilim in the days of Noah were not redeemable as they were half-human, half-fallen angel hybrids, those who take the Antichrist mark will no longer be redeemable by God. Whether the mark of the beast is an RFID chip, electronic tattoo, or some other device, Christians must be discerning. The Antichrist in the near future will use this technology for his evil purposes of tracking people and controlling their financial transactions all under the guise of worshiping him. The Bible gives us the most dire warning to those who take the mark of the beast and worship his image in Revelation 14, 9 through 11. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. 
He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. The first of God's bold judgments is aimed specifically at those who take the mark of the beast and worship his image as we read in Revelation 16, 1 and 2. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth. And a foul and loathsome sword came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. 1 John 2.18 Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many anti Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. It is a basically biological chip that it is in the tablet. And once you take the tablet and dissolves into your stomach, it sends a signal that you took the tablet. So imagine the applications of that, uh, compliance. Uh, the insurance companies to know that the medicines that patients should take, they do take them. So imagine the applications of that, uh, compliance, uh, compliance, uh, compliance. Our world is preparing for a one world government a one-world religion, and a one-world monetary system. It seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7-12 For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. When the deception comes, if you're not a born-again believer, you'll be swept away with it. The deception will be greater than you ever imagined in your life. It is going to be profound as to what happens. People in the high places are Satanist, they're Illuminati. Spiritual power in high places that will bring about a one world government. And by doing that, they intend to rule the world. And they have the help of a whole uh, mass of demonic spirits who are able to perform all kinds of miracles, deceptive miracles, manifestations, and all of this stuff to help them to bring about that one world government. And the goal is so that they can put one man up and worship him as God, the Antichrist. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. When a person comes to know Jesus as their Savior, they are brought into a relationship with God that guarantees their salvation as eternally secure. To be clear, salvation is more than saying a prayer or making a decision for Christ. Salvation is a sovereign act of God, whereby an unregenerate sinner is washed, renewed, and born again by the Holy Spirit as we read in John 3.3 3 and Titus 3.5. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, 
unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. When salvation occurs, God gives the forgiven sinner a new heart and puts a new spirit within him, as we read in Ezekiel 36, 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. The Spirit will cause the saved person to walk in obedience to God's word, as we read in Ezekiel 36, 27 and James 2, 26. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So what about repentance? Repentance is not a work we do to earn salvation. No one can repent and come to God unless God draws that person to himself, as we read in John 6:44. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Repentance is something God gives. It is only possible because of his grace. All of salvation, including repentance and faith, is a result of God drawing us, opening our eyes, and changing our hearts. God's long-suffering leads us to repentance, and so does his kindness, as we read in 2 Peter 3.9 and Romans 2.4. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? Ephesians 2.8 and 9 declares, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Works are not the cause of salvation. Works are the evidence of salvation. Faith in Christ always results in good works. The person who claims to be a Christian, but lives in willful disobedience to Christ, has a false or dead faith and is not saved. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. That is why John the Baptist called people to produce fruit in keeping with repentance, as we read in Matthew 3.8. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. A person who has truly repented of his sin and exercised faith in Christ will give evidence of a changed life as we read in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. A person who has not repented of their sin and exercised faith in Christ will give evidence of the works of the flesh, as we read in Galatians 5.19-21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. A person who has crucified the flesh and belongs to Christ will give evidence of the Spirit, as we read in Galatians 5.22-24. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Believers are born again, regenerated when they believe. For a Christian to lose his salvation, he would have to be unregenerated. The Bible gives no evidence that the new birth can be taken away. The Holy Spirit indwells all believers, as we read in John 14, 17. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit baptizes all believers into the body of Christ, as we read in 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. For a believer to become unsaved, he would have to be unindwelt and detached from the body of Christ. John 3.15 states that whoever believes in Jesus Christ will have eternal life. If you believe in Christ today and have eternal life, but lose it tomorrow, then it was never eternal at all. Hence, 
If you lose your salvation, the promises of eternal life in the Bible would be in error. Scripture says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Remember, the same God who saved you is the same God who will keep you. Once we are saved, we are always saved. Praise God, our salvation is most definitely, eternally secure. Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready!